Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Chargers, are you frustrated and stressed out with your professional and personal life? The Charge Podcast will help you get recharged. Yes, it is hard to believe we are in the second half of 2020. It's been a very interesting first six months with the pandemic that hit the world. The key is not to focus on what is out of our control. Instead, focus on the influence we can create in our life. How are you doing with your goals for 2020? Have you been sidetracked with the events of the world? Let's decide right now to make the second half of 2020 the best year yet. This quote from Jim Rome sums it up best. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Remember, the podcast is named The Charge after my mantra. Create habits around real goals every day. Let's get recharged in the podcast to influence a positive culture in our life each day. Are you ready? Chargers, I know you're always looking for opportunities to learn, grow, and develop. That's why you listen to The Charge Podcast. Well, most leaders struggle with communicating the goals of your business to get results. At the Leadership Navigator Academy, we've created a learning and development program that helps leaders hold themselves and their team accountable. When your leaders change behaviors, you see results in increased performance and a more engaged team, which increases profits. If you would like to learn more about the Leadership Navigator Academy, go to thechargepodcast.com and click on the LNA link to get all the information. Chargers, welcome back again this week. I am so excited to share different guests with you with different viewpoints. And today we've got a business owner that has started five different businesses. So we're going to share with you today, Jeff Maines. He's an expert at turning ideals in the enterprises. He has built five companies, as I said, generating over 200 million in combined revenue. He is the founder and CEO of Intelligent Contacts, a software company which fixes one of the biggest problems in healthcare, billing. Helping healthcare providers extend the same great patient experience of care onward through the patient-friendly billing process. Fanical about helping entrepreneurs build stellar companies, Jeff leads a growth accelerator called Champion Leadership Group. Through it, he coaches business leaders to navigate complex challenges and future-proof their business models to weather the inevitable storms of life. Combining his business experience with hobbies such as scuba diving, shark photography, flying, and boating, Jeff brings fresh perspective, linking business lessons to everyday life. He is the author of a new book, Small Fish, Big Pond, Building a World-Class Business that Swims Circles Around Competitors. Jeff, it is great to have you on the Charge Podcast. Welcome, my friend. Hey, thanks, Gary. Glad to be here. I'll give a disclaimer so they all know Jeff and I met at a conference a couple years ago, and it just shows you, I talk to the Chargers, you never know who you might meet at a conference and be able to bring back, and we've touched base again, and I said, you need to come on the Charge podcast, and then he told me he's got a book that he's launching, so what a great time to have you on the podcast, Jeff. Absolutely. Chargers, we always ask this question. But Jeff, I'm curious to see what he's going to say to it. He knows my mantra is charge. Create habits around real goals every day. What habit or habits do you think led to success in your life, Jeff? Well, I would say one of the things I just, I think differently. And so thinking um, about processes and frameworks. So anything that I do more than once or twice I'll create a process or a framework around it. So it's consistent. And and I think that's the mark of a champion is consistency. And so doing it the same way or having a way to go back and and repeat that same process over again uh, has really served me well. Well, that's going to lead us right into our discussion then. Because you're an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur, we've started different multiple businesses. But one of the greatest challenges that most entrepreneurs have They're great about starting their business, but they are not good 
in processes or frameworks. So share with us, with the five companies you have, it, does it help it get easier by creating some of those frameworks and processes or does it make it harder? You know, in some ways it is easier because you, you take those same processes from one to another. And that's one of the things that I've been able to do. Uh, every business has been in a different industry, which is really strange. Most wow. people will get into one industry and that's what they do for a long, long time. But what I've been able to do is take the, the processes and best practices from one in industry and move those over to the next business, a new industry. So something that is old in one industry, be able to take it into a new industry and use it there where it can be something that, that's really revolutionary. Uh, where in you know, one industry, it, it's not that interesting because people have been doing it for years, but you take it over somewhere else and they've never heard of it before. Or it's very different than the way uh, companies are doing business. So seeing opportunities that way has, has really been interesting. So in some ways, it gets easier. Uh, in some ways, I think that the market or switching industries makes it a little bit harder because you are learning something new. But I think that also brings some advantages in that you don't have the, the baggage. Uh, you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know how things are supposed to be done. So that's been one of my advantages is I don't, when I come into a new industry, I don't necessarily know how things are supposed to be. And so I find a way. And a lot of times it's a new way or it's a different way than the way things are being done uh, currently in the industry from people who have been there for 10 or 20 or 50 years. And so that's a, certainly an advantage of being able to come in and bring fresh new ideas uh, into a, a new industry. Yeah, I bet that's really exciting too to be see that they do some things do cross. You have to bring some things new in. But I think a real key of yours, and I will tell this because I'm trying to make a point to my entrepreneurs and small business owners that's listening is, if you're not a good process person, Jeff has that natural talent that fits his code. But the thing is, you can bring that person on your team. And that's the real key because what I've seen in organizations that when they create processes that are repeatable, then they are not so dependent on the person. They're vital, they're important, the people are, but the challenge is in a lot of small businesses, we have two or three key people and when one leaves us, it really hurts our business in the long term. But when you create the processes, you can start to fit others into that business. I've got a small business owner just recently hired an operations person and he's starting to really create their processes and it's going to make them stronger as an organization. And I, if you don't mind, Jeff, kind of what you've seen there because you're that person, but with, since you've got five different companies that you've seen that with, have you seen that happen within your organizations? Absolutely. And what's funny is, is I'm not necessarily the person to execute those processes yeah. is, but I am somebody who wants to, to start the process or, or create it or, or have some sort of a framework, but then I need that other person. I have somebody that I, I hired in, and I call him my finisher, uh, which I think is really funny. They have a real title, but that, that they're, they're my finisher. And so they're the ones that finish everything that I start. And so as an entrepreneur, this is something I see so often in entrepreneurs is that, that we'll have an idea and, and we'll do something. And so I'll have an idea and here's, here's what we're going to do. And we'll do it. You know, here's step one, two, three, and four. And, and that's it. And I've got it figured out. And then I forget about it. But I have that finisher that will take that and really put it into, to put it into a real structure, something that can be passed on uh, that is coherent to other people so that they can execute. And so that's one of the things that is you do multiple companies or as companies grow, being able to pass that over to somebody else is so important. And having those people that can execute, uh, not just the visionary. Because so many entrepreneurs are, are like that. They're, they're like me and, and not everybody is. Some are very operational. Some are very focused. A lot of them are, are, are kind of scattered and they have some great ideas, but then it's, it's that follow through. So having that person that is the execution person, the operations person that can take and put those processes into practice so it's not just creating the process or having the idea for it. It's putting it into practice and then using it over and over and over again and making yeah, I, it better. I, I call for most entrepreneurs what we call that the squirrel effect. There you most go. Entrepreneurs, yes. There's a nut over there. There's one over <laughs> here. We go wherever it's at. But the key what you're talking about in our industries is we bring in that finisher and whatever term you want to use, but that process person that really puts it in, you can see it shape up but then you have someone actually be able to follow through. 
Yes, because one thing yes. for entrepreneurs, they are more visionaries. So they don't like doing all that other work. But there's people that have skill sets that they love doing that part of it. But they couldn't come up with the framework when they started. And I just think that's a great way for people to look at their businesses because entrepreneurs, one of the reasons I feel they fail is not having the processes in place long term because they're too dependent on key people. And when those key people leave, they have a hard time replacing them. What are some other things that you've seen where entrepreneurs have failed and in the line of work you do? I think that's a big one is the, the processes or the, the way that business is done uh, is not documented well. It's, it's what I just call urban legend or maybe corporate legend is a better way of, of putting it. And it, it's something that somebody knew how to do, but then they're gone for whatever reason. You know, they could, they could leave the company. They could be out on maternity leave. They could, you know, any, for any number of reasons, they're gone and now nobody knows what to do. So having uh, documentation, I think, is something that, that is really important. Um, one of the, the biggest challenges I think entrepreneurs have, and, and I'm guilty of this every single time I start a company, and I know these things, is, is what I call American Idol Syndrome. And, and, and that is that, you know, if you remember American Idol back in the, the early yeah. days uh, when they would bring anybody on who thought they could sing and uh, they were terrible. And those were the best ones. Uh, the more, the worse they were, the better they were sometimes. Uh, but as entrepreneurs, we're kind of that way as well. Cause we think that, you know, we're the, the, the greatest singer in the world. We're the, the greatest, we can do every job in the company, the best. And it's not the case. We need those other people. And, and when we can do that and we can, we can turn those things over and, and allow other people to, to work in, in what I call their genius zone. And it's just like you said, you know, it's something that they love and they really do have that expertise. And when we turn that over and let them live into their expertise and stay within our expertise, one, we're happier. There's a lot of things that, that I don't really enjoy doing, especially you start a company, you do everything. And there are a lot of things that I can do, but I'm not very good at and I don't enjoy and it doesn't give me energy. But when I can find somebody else that that is something that does bring them joy, it gives them energy, and they're really, really good at it, that's where business really takes off. But it's when entrepreneurs don't want to give up that control. They want to hold on. And, and I'm telling you, I don't think I've ever given anything away in my business that I haven't left claw marks all over it trying to hold on. And, but it's really when I let those things go. And, and turn it over to somebody that that is their genius. That's where business really flows and it becomes fun. Yeah. And I've heard the same kind of genius zone. I've heard it's their unique ability. There's yep. multiple terms out there, but you find what you said, what energizes them. It may be draining to you, but someone else that's energizing. Then you're really setting yourself up for those frameworks that really allows you to move the company forward. And a good way to look at this is if you're, per, if a person was gone in your organization for four weeks straight, could you live without them? Could you be gone on a four week vacation? I've heard this before and your business still operate. If it can't, then you've got some work to do to be able to create that. And you may say four weeks, there's no way I'm, I'm lucky to get a week off a year. <laughs> well, that's those processes. I mean, look at McDonald's, the e-myth um, that Michael Gerber wrote about. It was all about processes. Um, and you can look at the documentary on McDonald's, but what allowed that vision to succeed was there was processes put in place. And for every business, if we do a better job of that, we could talk all day about that one, but we won't. But I want to talk a little bit about your book because it sure. just came out, Small Fish, Big Pond. Would you share with us kind of what your, the concept of the book is about? Sure. Well, it's uh, really kind of, a, I think about weird things a lot. And that's just one of the things that I do. And so, you know, just asking that the question, you know, what, uh, what do exceptional companies do that mediocre companies don't do, or maybe they do poorly or not at all? Um, you know, how do some companies achieve rapid growth and others just kind of sink and, and don't go anywhere? And what can business leaders learn from the world of fish? <laughs> yeah, again, thinking about weird things. And yeah, I, I spent a lot of time in the, the water, uh, on the water, under the water, and uh, I've always been fascinated uh, by the ocean, you know, things that are small, things that are big. I do a lot of shark photography, but, and I love the big things, but I also like the really small things, very intricate things. And the, the initial idea came from a, a dive trip 
was on and uh, my dive buddy, we were down uh, at, looking at, at fish and things. And, and so, you know, he, he gives me a sign, you know, look at this. And you, you never know, you know, being from the South, you don't know, is this going to be one of those, here, hold my beer, watch this kind of moments or, uh, you know, what, what's coming up next. So he pulls his regulator out and, and uh, opens his mouth and, uh, and this little cleaner fish comes up and actually starts like cleaning his teeth. And I mean, I'm, I'm just laughing underwater and uh, this is, this is crazy. And, and so that really kind of started you know, me looking at that as a blue street cleaner wrasse. And that was kind of the first thought process. And to really look at it, what do these little guys do? Uh, they're, you know, small things. If you ever saw the, the movie um, uh, Shark Tale, the, the, the Oscar in there, uh, Will Smith's character was a, a blue street cleaner wrasse. And so they, they provide cleaning services for fish all over the ocean. And it's just an amazing thing to watch. And they'll, obviously, they'll do it for people as well. Uh, so if you know if you don't have a great dental plan, uh, maybe go visit a fish. <laughs> but uh, you know, looking and seeing what they do and how fish come from all over and and go and it's it's kind of a, a safe zone. But they'll go and they'll swim in in a mouth and gills and and all over. Uh, it's one of the few things will swim into a shark's mouth or a barracuda and and is actually allowed to swim back out. But these guys are fearless, but they provide such great service that uh, fish come from all over. And that's kind of where the, the initial thought process came from. And as I continue to, to think about this and other relationships in the ocean and how those relate to business, and that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, how the, the book came about. That, that is very interesting. I haven't got the book yet, but I will be getting it and can't wait to read it. But in there, I know you and I've talked about that you have in there kind of what you call the future-proof strategic framework. Can you yes. kind of share a little bit about that? Sure. Well, the, the book, in addition to, to talking about fish, it actually follows the, the story of a, a client that I work with, a guy named Ron from a company called SB, uh, SBTA Partners. And so Ron called me one afternoon and uh, you know, talked about it in the book and, and it really follows his story all the way through. But so he called me and said, hey, you know, my biggest client uh, just called me and, and they said, I have to drop my price 20% or they're leaving. And, uh, and that will absolutely sink my business. The, the big problem is my margin is only 15%. I don't know what to do. Can you help? I mean, and now that's, uh, that's a, a really tough place to be. And, uh, and, and where this uh, idea came from, we walked through over the course of a weekend, uh, Future Proof Strategic Framework, and, and really got it much more refined through that process. But it's really three things. Uh, so if you're, if you're listening along, you could draw like a triangle. And on the, the left side, you could write purpose. On the right side, you could write people. And in the base, as we talked about earlier, is process. And so the, the framework really goes through those three key elements in looking at, uh, at your business and how things fit together, looking at the, the purpose, your mission, your vision, uh, your purpose, why do you exist, what, uh, what's your big value proposition, what's your origin story. Everybody wants to know, uh, you know, companies, entrepreneurs, you know, where did you come from, why do you do what you do? And uh, when they buy into that and when they connect emotionally with, uh, with you and your brand, and, and that purpose, they say, yes, you know, this is for me. I'm on board. And when you capture somebody's head and their heart, they'll buy anything that you're selling. And so having that, that strongly defined purpose, and then that, that just goes right to your people. And your people and your staff buy into that purpose as well. So at the top of that uh, triangle, that's really the commitment is the intersection of people and purpose. So your people and having the right people on board in the right places, you know, big fan of good to great and having the right people on the bus and uh, in the right seats. Uh, but it, some of it has to do with that commitment. And then the people and the process on that bottom right corner, you write consistency. And that's really the, the people that execute those processes uh, provide a consistent experience for your clients. That that is something that, that uh, is, is predictable. They have outcomes that there's no mismatch in what you're, you're advertising or you're marketing uh, and what is actually being delivered. And then on the, the other side, on the bottom, we've got process and we've talked about that. And where process meets purpose, that creates community. And so it's those processes and the, the purpose and, uh, and the community and, and what, you, what you leave behind, you know, it could be legacy. It could be how you're, you're uh, 
social entrepreneurism, uh, your purpose, how you make the world a better place. Well, the key is too, what you're really talking about is I talk a lot about culture and what you're doing is you're creating the culture for your company. You know, I talk about positive culture in my area, but when you're talking about purpose, people in the process, that's building the culture of your organization. And I've kind of framed it up before and I've kind of working on a process right now that I'm sharing with people is, you know, you take care of your people, your performance increases what happens to your profits, your profits increase. Don't take care of your people and their performance dips, then normally what happens to your profits? They're reduced or they lower or you don't have any profits. It makes it tougher in an organization. And as entrepreneurs, we have to understand those work together as we're creating um, each one of these pieces. Well, I'm I'm excited already. I can't wait to read the book to be able to get all the details there. But how does that, you know, kind of when we look at that, when you see like right now, we've got a little bit of economic turmoil in the marketplace. How does the fish and how does this relate to the economy to be able to future proof ourselves? Sure. Well, one of the things that is missing from the, the model, and, and I get asked this a lot, you know, well, where's product in there? And, and it's not. Because when you have those three elements, the product is interchangeable. So you could build, you know, one product. And I think that is really important is to, you know, to understand who your audience is and have a, a, a product service that really fits the needs of that audience. And, and that's really important. And I do talk about that in the, the book, but that is something that will change. So as, as the market changes and it changes and it changes fast. And so I talk a lot about that in, uh, in innovation. It is going faster and faster than ever. Um, you know, things that they used to take, you know, five or 10 or 20 years to change uh, are changing in months now. Uh, the, the speed of innovation is, is going so, so fast. So a product that is, is hot today may be obsolete tomorrow. You think about uh, a few years ago, you have to think back a little bit. Um, if we were in a, a, a different, to travel a lot, so in different places, we actually had to have like paper maps. And then if we didn't know where we were going, it was, you know, billboards or maybe make some phone calls. And then these little GPS units came out and that was revolutionary. It was awesome. Love that. And uh, I didn't have to know what I wanted. It was right there. I just plug it in and and good to go. Well, those hot devices, um, gone. And they're pretty much obsolete now because we all have GPS devices and cameras uh, right in our pockets all the time. So, you know, things are, are changing, you know, time and time again. So that product that you have today, uh, may, maybe it's relevant now. Uh, maybe it'd be relevant tomorrow. Uh, we used to go to uh, stores on Friday nights and walk some aisles looking for something to watch at home, like a movie. And, and that's changed. And the DVDs came out. And DVDs are obsolete for the most part now because we're streaming everything. So, you know, it, just because you have a product that's hot today doesn't necessarily mean it will be tomorrow. So especially in times of, uh, you know, economic turmoil, it's really an, an important time to look at what you're offering and ask the question, is it still relevant to the market? When times are good, that's a really good question to ask. Is this still relevant to the market? Is it going to be relevant to the market uh, three years from now, two years from now, six months from now? And if the answer is no, or I don't know, then it's time to look at something else. But having that, that process, that the purpose, the people and the process together, you can have new products. Uh, we've seen you know, in the, the earlier part of the year, I mean, businesses shut down. You've got uh, you know, a, a choice of, of shut down or decide uh, restaurants, for example. You know, restaurants are shut down. Nobody was there. Well, what could they do? Well, they could do delivery. They got really, really good at delivery. They got really good at to-go orders. Uh, there were places that opened. Very, very cool idea. They took their, their supplies. And so there's a, a steakhouse not far from my house and, and they became a meat market. Like, you know, so it's, it's that innovation. It's how can we take what we have and, and use it to meet a demand today? So as the market changes and it changes fast, what, what tools do we have? What processes do we have? What, uh, what can we offer the market that is relevant now and, and deliver it to them in a way that is, uh, that is unique? And I think for entrepreneurs, it's not getting comfortable because whenever you get comfortable in your business, you're not willing to ask yourself, 
those tough questions. Without We're not looking at the market. And like you said, it's normally when you're at your height and things are going the best, that's when you really ought to take a picture in that rear view mirror and say, is this going to continue? And how is that going to change? I kind of did that in my business. I was in the mobile phone industry and then in the wireless industry. And in 2012, I sold that business because I saw what was happening in the marketplace that people wouldn't need the stores as much. And the carriers was planning and changing their plan. Yes, you have stores that you can still go to, but how many people just order it online and get that replacement now? And we right. saw that trend kind of coming and I decided I was going to get out before they got me out. You know, you always want to beat the punch. That is the key. Was well, an entrepreneur, when you're looking at your product, there's a product in your there. But what can you create now that's that next product offering that brings you forward? Jeff, we could kind of go on probably for hours <laughs> with our sure. discussion because with our entrepreneur side, that's into us and we're really um, involved in that. But before we get to the recharge round, I do have this question because I think entrepreneurs learn from other entrepreneurs and we learn as people. If you look back and when you started your career, what's one thing you wish you had known at the beginning of your career? I think one of the, the key things would be just the adaptability is so important. And, you know, it, it's really easy just, you know, as, as you said, um, discomfort. And so, you know, learning early to live with discomfort and, and not, not be looking for comfort. I think that's something that, that I did early on is, you know, I'm going to get to a place and then things are going to be easier. Things are going to get good or I don't have to worry about that anymore. And, but that, that's really not what business is about. It's about learning to live in that balance of discomfort and not to the point where you're taking crazy risk or doing dumb things, but, you know, constantly pushing yourself, never being, being satisfied and, uh, and living in discomfort that, you know, there's probably somebody somewhere, you know, three guys sitting in a garage working on making a better mousetrap than what you have today. And so, you know, having that discomfort of I've always got to be moving forward, got to be thinking, got to be pushing on and, uh, and not just looking for that place where I could, I could relax because it, it doesn't exist. I think you hit it is just really realizing that <clears throat> what is going to make my business better? Because I always said to my people is, you know, when we're comfortable, that basically we're in reverse then. We're not in neutral. It's not standing still. Right. It's going backwards. You've got to be moving forward in your business each and every day. I really appreciate you sharing that. Jeff, share with them, number one, where they can get the book if they're interested. I think you've got a website for that. And also share your website. And we'll share it again at the end. But I think now's a good time to share that. Sure. My website, if you're interested in uh, speaking or uh, want to learn more about me, you can go to jeffmains.com. Uh, you can check out the, the book at smallfishbigpond.com uh, or pick it up at Amazon or pretty much anywhere books are sold. So check that out. I think you'll enjoy the read. I know I can't wait to get into it myself and I will be doing that real soon. And I always recommend books. So I'll recommend one of your books um, after I read it. I'll recommend it because I love sharing books with people. And the one thing you heard about Jeff, he's a constant learner. He's always learning and adapting. Um, part of writing books is we're always willing to learn. And I think that's the other message for all of us, even if you're not an entrepreneur, is lifelong learning um, really comes through. Jeff, I'm going to ask you six questions that I ask every um, person that comes on the podcast, each right. one of my guests. And it's kind of what I call the recharge round. So we're going to kind of go rapid fire here. But my first question for you is, share with us how you believe your mindset affects your daily living. Well, mindset is, is so important. Um, I think our, our, our lives move in the direction of our, our strongest thought. You know, what we think about is what we become. And so, you know, if whatever it is that we're thinking about uh, constantly, it is where we're going. And so having that, that mindset and a positive mindset or a realistic mindset, so not looking at things um, you know, as, as rosy all the time and, and too positive, but at the same time, not looking at, it, at things you know, worse than they are, but having a mindset that's realistic and, uh, and you know, knowing that whatever we think about, we're going to move toward. And so choosing our thoughts and choosing what we think about uh, because it, it really affects 
who we are. And I know you love scuba diving and you love fish, yes. but what do you do the days you're not doing that to bring energy into your life? Well, one of my coaches gave me a, a tip a few years ago that it really revolutionized the way that I work, and that is uh, working in sprints. And so one of the things that I do uh, every day is really try and work uh, in 50-minute in sprints. So I take an hour, and I'll work heads down, 50 minutes, no interruptions, no email, no phones, no nothing. 50 minutes, and then at the end of that, stop, take a break, and I've got 10 minutes, and do something that is completely different. So something that is, is, you know, completely changes my state. So, you know, pick up a guitar, play a little bit, uh, go for a walk, uh, you know, go talk to the staff, go, uh, you know, if I'm working from home, uh, you know, go see my wife, see what she's up to, go do something that is just completely unrelated uh, and complete state change from what I've been doing for the last hour. And if I can do that two or three times a day uh, and focus in, you think, well, that's only working three hours a day. Uh, but that's some of the most productive time. I can get more done in that 50 minutes than I can in, in eight hours of, of, you know, messing with email and interruptions and all the other stuff. So, but, but taking those breaks, it's so important to, to do that and recharge. And uh, I like, there we go. Recharge round. Yeah. So we'll recharge and do something else. Change your state. Yep. I love that. That's kind of really changing the performance and people don't realize. And when you say three, they think that's not much, but actually if you get three 50 minute segments in, you're getting more than most people put in eight to 10 hours because they're getting interrupted all the time. Yes. So uh, I agree wholeheartedly with you. Share the number one connection or relationship that's made the biggest impact on your life. I've had uh, so many great mentors over the years. And I think that is, is one of the reasons that I have been successful. And uh, tremendously grateful about that. Um, you know, I'll say when I was you know, 16 years old, just kind of drifting, not really sure what I wanted to do. There was uh, my youth pastor, a guy named uh, Keith Brannon, still friends to this day, officiated my wedding even. And, uh, but, you know, he really took me in under his wing and, and, uh, and helped me, uh, you know, get, uh, get direction and, and guidance. And it was a, a real mentor. And that really started, uh, kind of a, a process of, of mentoring over the, the years that has really just been invaluable. But, uh, and I would say that's one, you know, where, where a guy you know, took interest in somebody that uh, had, you know, I'll say, you know, nothing to offer in return and didn't expect anything in return, but, uh, but just invested in me and, uh, and, and who I was and believed that I could, I could do something great. And so, you know, I would say that's, that, uh, you know, is, is one of the, the all time greats. And I know Jeff won't say this, but I know about him that he's now carrying that forward. He's being that mentor for others. And I think that's the key we have yes. to realize. If you're at the different stage of your life, now it's your time to carry that forward. People have done it for you. Now, who can you be a mentor for in your life? Yes. Jeff, what advice has influenced you the most in your life? I think it kind of goes back to mindset. Uh, one of the, the best pieces of advice I ever have is, I had was, yeah, it, if you think you can, or if you think you can't, you're right. And that's something that has stuck with me for a, a long, long time. And, and I think that's absolutely true. So why not think you can, because you're going right. to get more accomplished then, you know, than the other side of it. Exactly. How about I know you love the right books, but I also know you like to read books. So yes. share with us your favorite book and why you love it. There's so many, I probably read a hundred books a year and, uh, and there's so many great books. Uh, business adventures is one that I, I really, really like. Um, that's a, a good one. Uh, good to great. I mentioned earlier, that's one I probably read at least once a year. Uh, and then even um, older books. So, you know, old books, uh, Napoleon Hill and uh, you know, things that are, are written a while back or uh, Claude Hopkins. Uh, one of my favorites is My Life in Advertising. It's a hundred year old marketing book. And you think in, the, in today's digital world, what in what, what would a hundred year old marketing book have to do with marketing today? And I'll tell you, it could have been written a month ago. The ideas and the concepts in there are absolutely brilliant. And this is hundred year old stuff, but you know, just because it's old doesn't mean it doesn't have value or doesn't have application to today because what's the same is people. Yeah, people those, haven't changed. 
Yeah, those classics. I mean, those are out there. How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale yes, Carnegie. And, that's another good and one. Bowling Hill that you talked about, How to Think and Grow Rich. I mean, all those today. Yeah, you some of the terminology you have to change to today's time for yourself, but they're all so prevalent and that's why they're classics and that people still come back to them each and every day. Thanks for sharing that. Last question. You almost made it through the recharge round, but we, we always save the hardest for last. All right. Define in one sentence or less, what legacy do you want to leave the world? I think pass it forward, pay it forward. That would be my one sentence. I can reach high because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants and I can be that giant for the next generation. And I think that applies to all of us. I mean, and you definitely have paid it forward today by sharing your expertise with the Chargers. Some great discussion about entrepreneurship and how we can, you know, that small fish, big pond. If you're really interested in the entrepreneur area, it's an exciting field to be in. But even if you're not that entrepreneur, you can be an entrepreneur within the company that you're working for now and be that Charger and be that go to person that you're working for. Because number one, the key is really getting that purpose of what we're doing. And if we are enjoying and loving our work, then continue that. But really try to find that in organizations. Jeff, I can't thank you enough for saying yes to be on On The Charge podcast. This is a great discussion, my friend. Thank you, Gary. Share with us again your website. We'll have it all in chargepodcast.com show notes, but share with them where they can get your book and reach out if they want to connect with you. Sure. To connect with me, jeffmains.com. Send a note to hello at jeffmains.com. Um, you can visit the book website and that is smallfishbigpond.com. So please check out his book. I know you're going to love it and I can't wait to get my own copy. I'm going to get it ordered now. You can get if um, they're launching um, the book out, but it's also available on pre-reads. So it's available right now. So you can go to um, small fish, big pond and get your copy right away. And I think he's got some bonuses there for you if you get the book. So check it yes. out. I know there's some great information that they're going to receive from getting the book. Absolutely. Jeff, thank you again for being on the charge podcast. Thanks, Gary. Go chargers. Chargers, let's go. If you're not charged up now, we're going to have to hook up something really heavy to you to get your heart pumping because we had a great conversation with Jeff and I love sharing entrepreneurs because he's done the work. But the thing is, he's discovered things along the way that he's trying to pay it forward to share it with you. And isn't that really the key in life is when you learn something, how are you willing to share that with others? How about somebody on your team right now? They're probably needing some help with something. Why don't you go in and be a coach and mentor for them and help them become even better? Maybe see what they're really trying to discover for themselves. And maybe you can be that mentor that can help them through that process. Chargers, come back again next week and we'll have another great guest. And remember, share and like the podcast and let others know about it. That's how we keep growing each and every day. I appreciate you and I'm so glad you're here on the Charge Podcast. And if you need those show notes, just go to chargepodcast.com. We'll see you next week. Make it a great day. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.